Why didn't Microsoft fix this horrible bug? Hi everyone, Leo Notenboom here for askleo.com. Here's a example question that I get from time to time. I've complained about this bug for years and no one has an answer. It's horrible. Forums are full of people who are experiencing this bug and no one has an answer. It's been there for years and Microsoft continues to just ignore us. Obviously, Bill's too busy trying to make more money by forcing us to upgrade and doesn't have the time for bugs that impact lots of people. Why won't they fix this horrible bug? Now, I want to start off by saying I'm not speaking about a specific bug. There is no bug that I'm talking about. This is a hypothetical composite question illustrating something that I see very often. Someone has encountered a problem. They consider it the most important problem ever. And Microsoft, no, Bill Gates himself is ignoring them. They can't conceive of a reason that this bug wasn't fixed long ago. It's that important to them. So this video isn't really about making excuses for Microsoft. They certainly do screw up from time to time. More often than not, it's a case of not understanding the priorities of their users. But even that's no excuse. Sometimes they just get it wrong. This is more about explaining the process and the incredible complexity of the problem. And with that, gaining an understanding of why a bug might not get resolved quickly or at all. To me, part of the no excuses for Microsoft position is that what I'm about to say applies to all large systems. Even though I'll use the word Microsoft, the same is absolutely true if you replace Microsoft with Apple or Mozilla or Google or any of a hundred other software vendors, including open source. Now, I don't want to minimize your experience. Bugs can have a significant impact on how you use your computer every day. And in fact, it could just have a significant impact on your day. I am taking your experience seriously, as does Microsoft, believe it or not. But I also want to be pragmatic. Because your experience has such an impact on you, it's important to understand the realistic chances of getting it addressed and whose problem it really is. Now, sometimes it's intended behavior. Just because you don't like something doesn't mean it's a bug. It may annoy the heck out of you, but that doesn't mean it's wrong or accidental. Microsoft does a lot of research to determine the best way for things to work. Typically, it's referred to as usability studies. They updated refined products based on the feedback they get from real people using the proposed changes long before those changes ever see the light of day. Based on that feedback, many changes never make it into the product. But there's no pleasing everyone. If 900 people like a proposed user interface and 100 don't, Microsoft will probably choose the one that pleases the most. Actually, they'll try to get it more like 990 compared to 10, but that's beside the point. If you're one of the 100 or the 10, well, for that feature, you're out of luck. In this case, it's not a bug. It's a decision that appeals to a majority of users, a majority which you, unfortunately, are not a part. Sometimes it's just not that important. There are bugs in Windows that I'm certain have been there for well over a decade or two and will never be fixed. Why? The number of people affected by the bug or the severity of the bug is so small that it's not important enough to fix in comparison with other issues. Let's say you found a thousand people who have experienced what you and even they believe is the most important bug ever. The number of Windows installations exceeds 1 billion machines. Your most important bug ever impacts 0.0001% of Windows users. Now, even the fact that 1,000 is a tiny fraction of Windows users isn't enough to get the bug ignored. It's just one factor. The phrase data loss is another. One classification assigned to problem reports is the concept of data loss. Does this bug cause the user to lose data? 
That could be as simple as a crash that causes you to lose your work or some other failure that unexpectedly wipes out all or part of your hard disk. Data loss matters. If part of a screen isn't redrawn as it should be, or a mouse pointer is lost, or an information window closes unexpectedly, those are all significantly less serious than something that causes a user to lose data. So even if thousands of people experience the same problem, that might be tiny compared to all the users that are not. The problem is mostly non-destructive. You can see that it might not get prioritized as highly as other issues, including future feature development. Sometimes it's not Microsoft's bug. One of Windows' most compelling features is ability to be extended by third-party hardware vendors. Today's version of Windows can work with hardware that hasn't even been dreamed of yet because when that hardware comes into existence, the manufacturers can write software, also known as drivers, that integrate with Windows to support the new device. Microsoft didn't write and isn't necessarily responsible for every bit of software used by or even included in Windows to run your machine. What users perceive as being bugs in Windows may not be a part of Windows at all. Some are in the software added to Windows by other vendors. Even there, it can be tricky to understand who's responsible because hardware drivers can cause symptoms in seemingly unrelated areas. For example, display driver problems can affect your mouse. Microsoft can and does pass along reports of issues with third-party software, but they don't control how, when, or even if those bugs are resolved. They, like you, are at the mercy of those third-party software authors. This isn't limited to drivers. There are third-party applications and add-ons we may perceive as part of Windows, even though they are not. When they fail, they are often seen as a failure in Windows component when the fault truly lies elsewhere. Now, unfortunately, finding a bug, even a simple one, is neither simple nor cheap. Because of the unimaginable complexity of the systems we now take for granted, the ramifications of even the smallest bug fix are difficult to predict. It's not uncommon for a bug fix over here to break something over there. Hence, a good software vendor tests even the smallest fix thoroughly. What that means in Microsoft's case is that all of Windows needs to be run to a complete testing cycle to make sure that nothing was broken by that tiny fix. Imagine what it means to test every single feature in Windows. Now, imagine doing that for every different edition of Windows, Home, Pro, Enterprise, whatever. Now, imagine doing that again for every edition in every language included in Windows. Now, imagine trying to do all that quickly. The upshot is that the cost of even the simplest of fixes is surprisingly high. Thus, the decision to fix a specific bug is not simple. Now, there's an old software engineering maxim that says, a bug found by the customer is 10 times more expensive than one found in pre-ship testing. A bug found by pre-ship testing is 10 times more expensive than a bug found by the engineer writing the software. A bug found by the software engineer is 10 times more expensive than a bug found in the design before the software is even written. The earlier you find bugs, the less expensive they are to fix. There's a lot of pressure to fix bugs as early in the development cycle as possible. Indeed, thousands and thousands of bugs are fixed before the product is released. And yet, some make it through regardless. That is the nature of software development. There is no such thing as bug-free software, period. It's also the nature of the complexity of the operating system. There are days when, honestly, I'm amazed that any of this works at all. All software vendors are in kind of a no-win situation. We complain about software taking forever to arrive, and we complain about software bugs. But in the real world, those two things are at odds with one another. It takes time and discipline to write and test software to have as few bugs as possible. Obviously, software rushed to market because people are clamoring for it is likely to have more bugs. We can't have it both ways. Thus, 
every software release is a compromise. Engineers plead for just a few more days to fix a few more bugs, and marketing and salespeople complain that every day longer results in massive market share or revenue loss. The reality? Somewhere in between. Some releases strike the right balance, and others do not. Now let's talk about Bill for a second. I always scratch my head when people just rail against Bill Gates for perceived issues with Microsoft or its product. I'm not sure what it is about Microsoft that even today causes people to blame Bill personally for all of its faults and failings. Bill hasn't worked at Microsoft since sometime in 2008. That's 16 years from this video being recorded. And even when he did, he wasn't writing code, and he certainly wasn't improving or rejecting individual bug fixes in products or making specific product design decisions. In other words, he was never personally responsible for the features you don't like or the bugs you encounter. Your ire at him is wasted, unless you object to what he's doing with his philanthropic foundation. Bottom line, honestly, is that if you encounter something that doesn't work as you expect, look for solutions if you can, and if you can, report the problem. Do not get overly frustrated if no fix is forthcoming. And don't immediately jump to the conclusion that you're being ignored. That's highly unlikely. Instead, focus on finding workarounds or ways to avoid the problem. And if it really is the most important bug ever for you, that might mean switching to software from another vendor. For updates, for comments, for links related to this topic and more, visit askleo.com slash 4927. I'm Leo Notenboom, and this is askleo.com. Thanks for watching.